What's up guys, it's Ethan. You know, a lot of people are quarantined right now and they're resorting to dating apps to meet new people. Now, I've been on these dating apps before and I've had very little success, where even if I match with someone, I usually get ghosted. So I decided to reverse engineer all the major apps, build an artificial intelligence, like an Alexa or a Siri, and this intelligence will talk on my behalf, set up virtual dates, and ultimately speak to over 60,000 women in a nine mile radius of Manhattan. I was getting recognized on the streets last night. I'm gonna show you these conversations this AI bot had and what worked and what didn't work. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a crazy scientist. So let's social engineer the hell out of online dating. While there's many ways to build an artificial intelligence, most modern strategies use a neural network. And this is nothing more than a mathematical model that allows it to be trained on data. And a neural network is actually built in such a way that it resembles how the actual brain works and learns. And just like how children have to learn how to walk, our AI model is a child. It doesn't know anything about the world and we're gonna train it on how to have conversations. We have to actually have a source of data that would be a good representation of what a good dater is. So who would be the most ideal person to look at as a great dater? So I decided, well, what is the ideal man that women would love? I'd say maybe a James Bond character, maybe a bit of a Kevin Hart, and just add a little bit crazy, American Psycho. So I found the scripts to a lot of these major films and trained our model based off them. So how they handle conversations is gonna be how our AI engine, imagine all three of these people in one person, that's how our AI is gonna respond. My food comes out, I bow my head to say my grace. As I'm saying my grace, I hear a metal fork on my plate. Uh, bitch, you can't wait till I'm done talking to Jesus before you goddamn touch my goddamn plate. In order to accomplish this, I had to tag hundreds of pages of movie scripts. For example, I had to outline where James Bond is speaking versus other people. We wouldn't want to train it on other conversations. We only care about when James Bond is speaking to a female. So as you can see here, James Bond is in the yellow and Vesper, his crush who he's courting, is in the pink. And their conversation will be used to help train our AI model. You're not my type. Smart. Single. As you can see here, by having all of these scripts, the AI will then learn how to have real conversation and when similar points of the conversation arise to parts of the movie, it will then respond with the right character. So this requires lots of data, lots of scripts, and lots of information so that it knows how to handle every scenario and respond like the characters it was trained on. Because a lot of these films were set in the early 2000s or 1990s, they don't have concepts of like, what's up? Or um, what's your number? I'll text you. Because you know, texting wasn't a thing. So we actually added some small talk capability to give this AI a bit more of a human feel. But the majority of the conversations that it'll have will be using these movie scripts as a basis for how it will communicate. As you can imagine, this process took a very long time. It was extremely tedious and manual. And it's only me working on this, so I would just love it if you could give this video a like and subscribe. I'm rather new and I always remember my first subscribers. Uh, it just means so much to me. And if you really like social engineering, psychology, business, and technology, I have a lot more content coming out and I would just love the opportunity to share that with you. Make sure you hit the bell. And at this point, we should probably give it a name, something that we can call it by. And I thought, well, a James Bond character is very charismatic, so C. And then Kevin Hart is hilarious, so H. Um, a for artificial and D for dater. Chad, charismatic, hilarious, artificial dater. That sounds like a lot of Chads I know. Next, we're gonna reverse engineer all the major apps. This is done by peeling back the apps and taking a look at what is being sent from our phone to these services. And by recording this information, we can start to see what happens when I swipe right or when I swipe left. And now we're gonna use this information to then arm our AI agent with the ability, or Chad, with the ability to now swipe right, swipe left, and have conversations on our behalf. And finally, one of the most important pieces is our profile. And I thought to myself, just like an interview, your resume is extremely important in your accolades, but what's more important is your references. Don't sleep on your references. So I asked three of my good friends who happen to be celebrities if they can help me out. I asked Jesus, Santa Claus, and Peter Griffin. Unfortunately, Santa Claus couldn't help us because he thought maybe I wasn't a good, I was naughty, I was a little naughty this year. But Jesus and Peter Griffin were more than happy to help. Let's take a look at what they said. Well, hello there, mortals. It's me, your favorite Lord and Savior, Jesus. And uh, I just wanted to drop in and let you know that my disciple Ethan, well, <laughs> he's quite the guy. Me? I'd hardly have to forgive any sins with that guy. He's darn near perfect. I'm actually blushing even though I'm making this film right now. <laughs> but it's still like nice to hear. Yeah, I get lots of prayers for him, about him. I mean, so much that I like pretty much have to turn on my 
my prayer spam block filter. Where are these people at? Trust me, the most reputable guy like ever. When I say, Ethan, he is boyfriend material. Okay, we're, we get the point. Let's see what Peter Griffin has to say. How's it going in real life? Peter Griffin here telling you ladies to check out Ethan Kaiser. I mean, the guy's not only smart and handsome, he's also hilarious. I mean, he's a catch and he's definitely not a creep like all those quagmires out there. He's the sweetest guy ever. So we're just gonna add this to our profile and we're ready to begin. The one thing to note is that Chad has no understanding of attraction. For artificial intelligence to read the photo, it's very hard to do. It can be done, but it's very hard to do. So we didn't do that. We're simply gonna swipe right on everyone that we see up to 500 people a day. And we're gonna periodically wait, you know, two to three seconds per swipe to give it more of a human feel and we don't get banned. So all we need to do now is sit back, relax, and let Chad do his thing. And while we're waiting, feel free to comment below if you think maybe James Bond wasn't a good character to pick and you have a better character, put that better character down and I will take one of those comments and create a separate video using them and we'll see how they perform against this one. And if you actually want to use this technology on your own profile, fill out the link below or in the link there's a um, survey, fill out that survey, subscribe, comment and like this video. If you do all these things, I will build you yours if it's possible, I'll do my best. But if you fill out that survey, I will build your own AI bot and you can begin using it. Like five people are going to see this. I don't have any subscribers yet. so. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Coming straight from my Instagram story feed. Chad, hard at work, swiping for us. Every time you see the word success, that means he's swiped on a girl. <laughs> but if you guys want to know what I'm working on or see behind the scenes look, just follow me on Instagram. I post everything there while I'm working on it. I even post questions and take suggestions as I'm working on things, and your feedback may end up in one of my videos. So feel free to follow me at It's Ethan Kaiser. So guys, we have a little bit of an issue. It's kind of funny, but also an issue. If you look at the data, we were averaging around 100 matches a day. So about one in five, profiles that we swiped right on liked us back. That's good. But after the second day, our match rate went to zero. So I went to investigate why that is. Then I found this great conversation. She asked a very common question. So what do you do? Um, look at his response. So what do you do? I'm into uh, well, murders and executions mostly. Okay, we're gonna have to pull back on the Patrick Bateman just a little bit and um, retrain it slightly. After doing a little bit more research, it turns out we were shadow banned. And what this simply means is that we weren't banned out outright. We can still log into the application and we can message people, we can swipe people, but those people do not get our messages or our swipes. And it's a way for these app companies to remove people from the community while not outright banning them. Because when you ban someone, they might go into the app store and write a poor review and they don't want that, right? So it's a way of kicking people out without having them know that. But then they made one fatal flaw and it's poetic. It's so poetic. I noticed when we were looking at the profiles and swiping on them manually inside the application, when we were shadow banned, we were only seeing the most attractive profiles. Now, why would they do that? Now, we know internally that they have a rating system and they have a rating system based on how many likes you get. So they know who the best looking people are down to the least. I bet you in a board meeting at the CEO's office, they must have discussed like, okay, we're gonna shadow ban bad actors and bad users. And then we're only gonna show them the best looking people, just antagonize them a little bit more and add a little salt to that wound. So these app companies think they're gonna get the last laugh showing us the best looking profiles and not allowing us to swipe on them. But their arrogance and their hubris will be their fatal downfall. Remember how I said in the beginning that we don't know what's attraction and not because our AI doesn't recognize that. It's just gonna swipe right on everybody. So we're gonna change your strategy up just a little bit. Instead of swiping right on everybody, we're actually gonna swipe left on everybody until we run out of people in our nine mile radius on Manhattan. And this is so interesting because we know the profiles are gonna come in order of most attractive to least. Therefore, all we have to do is capture the information and store it somewhere of each profile in order, and we'll now know who the best looking people are down to the least. And when we capture their information, we're gonna get their first name, maybe their last name, uh, their profile picture, some work information that they put up, their about me, their bio, and we're also gonna capture their ID. Now every user gets a unique ID. You don't see it, it's used internally in the system, but the way these systems are designed is that when you swipe right or swipe left, you're essentially saying, hey system, I swipe right on this ID, and this ID is associated with a user in their database. All you need to know is that these IDs are how we identify individuals. So once our system says no to everyone in that nine mile radius, we'll have a list of accounts from hottest to least that we're storing locally on our computer, and all we'll have to do is figure out which individual from hottest to least is just 
below our standard. And once we find that individual, we now know that everyone that comes after them is also below our standard. So we can just delete them and only focus on the bunch we like. It's important to note that when setting my standard, I made sure that I was sober and had no other substance in use as this historically has uh, skewed my data negatively. <laughs> and because we're dealing with a hundred some thousand profiles, it's gonna be hard to go through them and find which one is just below our standard and then delete the, all the ones after them. We're gonna use a technique that's popular in computer science called a binary search. And because we have a sequential list, that means in order from most attractive to least attractive, all we're gonna do now is cut that list in half and look at the middle person. And whoever that person is, we're gonna ask one question. Would you go on a date with this person or would you not, strictly on appearance? And if the answer is no, I would not go on a date with this person, you now know that everyone that comes after them, you also would not go on a date with. Because remember, it's in order from most attractive to least. So that means you'll just delete all of them, including this person, and you're left with a new list, a smaller list. And you're gonna cut that in half. And you're gonna do the same thing, except this time, you may determine that this person in the middle, you would go on a date with. So okay, great. So you're gonna keep that left-hand side, and you're actually going to jump into the middle of the right-hand side and you're gonna perform this again. And you're gonna keep doing this until you cannot divide the list anymore. Then you'll be left with just the attractive people and you've cut out all the rest. So all we need to do now is create a new account for Chad. And as we see profiles, we'll look at the individual IDs associated with these profiles and compare it to our existing list of everyone that's above our lowest standards. And if they're within that list, we'll know we should swipe right on them. And if they're not within that list, we should swipe left. This way we only swipe right on people we find attractive. This is mayhem. I don't know how we figured this out, but it worked fantastically. Is fantastically a word? When Chad finished swiping on everyone in Manhattan, we ended with 5,391 matches. That's like a ton of matches. And when we tried to open up the app to look at this manually to see what happened, um, the app would crash. It couldn't open up because there's just too many matches it couldn't load. Eventually the app opened up and it worked. Let's take a look at one of the successful conversations and we measure success on whether or not the individual gave us their number. What do you really want to do with your life? Just briefly summarize. And, uh, don't tell me you enjoy working with children. Well, I want to be a doctor. Would you like to accompany me to dinner? If you're not doing anything. Sure. Where do you want to go? Anywhere you want. Just say it. I can get us in anywhere. Well, it doesn't matter to me. What's your favorite drink? Vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. You'd like to see my apartment? Um, not on the first date, but text me. I have to get back to work. I was like, all right, all right, all right. And we also had a lot of bad conversations that didn't lead anywhere. Do you feel fulfilled? I mean, in your life? I'd say so. Do you have a boyfriend? No, are you seeing anyone? Maybe, I don't know. So you are seeing someone? Not really. So, don't you want to know what I do? I work on Wall Street. Pearson Pierce. Have you heard of it? Uh, I haven't. Did you know that uh, Ted Bundy's first dog, a collie, was named Lassie? <laughs> Did you heard this? Uh, this is weird. Goodbye. I know my uh, behavior can be <laughs> erratic sometimes. When we dove deeper into the conversations, we found that the artificial intelligence had much more success and preferred to use Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. This is because Patrick Bateman is a predator. He starts and ends all conversations looking for that kill. And he tries to push his personality onto others. Whereas James Bond is much more laid back. He's, he's suave, women are already around him. He doesn't need to do anything. And then in the right moment, he makes one witty comment and all the women go, oh. But that doesn't happen in the real world, and especially in online dating. It turns out the predator approach was the most effective strategy. So of the 5,391 matches, we got around 300 successful conversations and 300 numbers, which I thought was like pretty good. So the entire point of me doing this was just to get past that early stage of dating, which is a waste of time and a lot of people ghost. I have 300 dates to go on now. Um, if anybody wants an introduction, like I can't handle them all. Like it's, it's a little too much. And what's really funny about this entire process is that as I am texting them, like myself texting 300 different people, um, I can't respond to them at the same time. So I'm like giving them like one word answers and then they, they like, like you more because of it. And then they're coming harder and harder every single time. And I'm just like, oh, this is really interesting. So yeah, if anyone needs intro or like wants to go on a date with, I, I'll be happy to make an intro. I, I can't handle it myself. Guys, I had so much fun making this video. I'm gonna make another one with different characters and a different AI in a different city to see how it performs. Again, subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell. 
I hate doing this. Like it's, I see YouTubers do this all the time. I hate it, but I'm brand new. So I'm not like a Logan Paul saying, you subscribe. I have like millions of followers. I have nobody and I like you guys. So please give me some love and I'll make more content like this. If you like social engineering, you like business, technology, psychology, and winning at all costs, give me a subscribe or subscription. I would love to uh, show you more stuff.